Hey Gadget Groupies, we've got another comparison for you today as we check out the differences between the LG V10 and the LG G4. Now this is not going to be one of my fight for blood, punch, 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 punch kinds of comparisons as we would expect the newer LG to be a little bit nicer than the older LG. And then this is also a completely new product line for LG. This is not a direct competitor against the G4. They are trying to carve out a new market niche for themselves. And in a lot of the early discussion that I've seen on the V10, it's a little overly simplistic to say that this is basically just, it's just the G4, but it's got better metal on the sides and it's got dual selfie cameras and a ticker display. There are a lot of little tweaks on this phone that actually do position it into a different tier, a different market position than what we had on LG's all-rounder flagship. Starting off on the front face, of course, we're going to notice the difference in screen size. Now, both of these are quad HD displays, 2560 by 1440, 2560 by 1440, but the V10 is going to come in at a 5.7 inch diagonal versus the G4's 5.5 inch diagonal. Both of these rocking the quantum IPS LCD panels, very nice LCD screens get us really close to the color, contrast, and outdoor brightness viewability of a phone like the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, though neither of them can quite compete with the outdoor brightness modes found on current Samsung phones. But I am happy to see that the improvements on IPS Quantum have moved LCD panels up into a much nicer viewing experience. And these two screens perform very similarly. If there are any differences, the V10 is maybe just a touch brighter. Both of these phones are at max brightness right now. And colors on the V10 do tend to skew just a touch warmer, in my opinion, than on my G4. But I'm really splitting hairs between these two phones as in daily usage. I'd be hard pressed to declare one a clear winner over the other. And of course, we've got two major differences between between these handsets. At the top of the V10, we've got this little ticker display where you can dock shortcuts to apps, you can have music player controls, or you just have a nice scripted personalization. This is one Carlos Bagnell's LG V10. It's not anyone else's LG V10. And this whole strip also becomes home to the dual front-facing selfie cameras. These cameras have different focal lengths so that one's narrower, more traditional selfie camera view, and then one's ultra-wide for better group shots. Make sure you get plenty of your landscape in your field of view. Though I wish they could work in tandem, or maybe even shoot video at the same time so that then later you could pick between a wider field of view or a narrower field of view. But at least we now have optical options for controlling what kind of scene we want to shoot. These two hardware features though definitely do contribute to the height of the gadget and one of the reasons why the V10 looks so much taller than the G4. And as a design nitpicky, it means our ambient light sensor has to move to this panel up here by the earpiece. And it breaks up the cream color on the silicone here. It is kind of a bummer that we couldn't find a way to fit this into the darker plastic on the front face. The V10 is noticeably taller and a little bit wider than our G4, but because of the way the screen curves on the G4, the V10 actually feels a little bit skinnier than LG's standard flagship. Now, nah, I'm not the biggest fan of phablets, so overall hand feel, I tend to side a little bit more with the uh, the G4. For me, it's a slightly nicer overall form factor and it's a little easier to reach everything on the screen. But I have to say for both devices, LG's done a phenomenal job of incorporating little software tweaks to help with those ergonomic issues. Things like being able to dock a shortcut at the bottom of our controls to drop the notification shade are very nice ergonomic touches as our phones get larger. Now, in terms of overall build quality and design, I thought the G4 was a nice improvement over the G3. The addition of these leather backplates really took the phone up a notch, especially over the glossy plastic that we had on the stock backplate and on the G3. But the sides and front face still have kind of that plasticky feel. The V10 moves us up to compete with some of my all-time favorite built smartphones like the Galaxy Note 4 and the Lumia 930. I think metal and plastic or metal and silicone here is a phenomenal hand feel. I think it looks cool, I think it feels good, and it's a little bit more practical than metal and glass in my opinion. It's easier to hold on to, especially if you have sweaty paws like I do. And what I'm really stoked about for this phone build is that LG moved to stainless steel rails on the sides of this phone, bypassing aluminum. Aluminum is a softer and more malleable metal, and steel should make this a fantastically rigid and durable device. LG is advertising mil-spec 810G drop and shock resistance on this phone. So not only is it prettier, it should be more durable. I mean, even trying to apply a little force on this phone, I, I have no fears of any potential bend gate situations. This thing feels rigid. Right here, just a few more little creaks and groans from the G4 and the largely plastic body. When it comes to camera hardware, these two are almost identical. In fact, they're just sort of mirror images of each other. We have the same half inch 16 megapixel camera sensors on both. We have the same flash and color sensors. We've got the same laser focus module for the smoothest and most sure-footed 
focusing systems I've found on any smartphone to date. The way that an LG slides and locks into focus on your photos and videos is just super pleasant. And for the most part, the camera software between these two phones is almost identical. We've got the same ultra simple mode where there's nothing else on the screen. You tap on the screen and it takes a photo. We've got the same automatic modes for shooting photos and videos between these two phones. And we have the same manual controls for still photos between these two phones. Where the V10 improves on the situation is providing these same manual controls for video. And we have a number of video modes that the G4 just doesn't have access to. We have a 21 by 9 aspect ratio cinema full HD, which is actually a proper 2K mode. And we finally get a 60 frame per second cinema HD and regular HD modes, which were just absent on the G4. Now there has been some consideration for the ergonomics of using this, as the ticker display now becomes a home for shortcuts to get into camera modes. And then when you're shooting video, it becomes a way to easily engage with the zoom, which you can't see me zooming in this shot because it's flat on a table. Now the changes here are largely software. So I'll be curious to see if maybe in a future update, like when the G4 gets Marshmallow, if LG will provide us some of these features for the G4. But LG's definitely drawn a line between these two phones and what experiences they have to offer. And I wonder if LG is maybe just not quite confident that the G4 is going to perform some of these tasks well with the reduction in RAM. And of course, one of the most exciting new features on the V10 over the G4 is the fingerprint scanner built into the power button. This is one of the most ergonomic approaches to biometric security I've found on any smartphone. For such a large device, you don't have to worry about dancing a thumb or moving the device around in your hand to reach a home button mounted fingerprint scanner. And your index finger does a really good job of lining up with these controls here while you're holding the phone in the most secure way possible. Scanning is fast and accurate. That one button press gets you into your home screens pretty quick. Now, both of these phones have removable back plates, so we can pop this cover off and get to the battery and the uh, micro SD card expansion slot. And both of these phones have 3000 milliamp hour batteries, but the battery in the V10 is a different form factor than the one in the G4. It's a little bit flatter, but it's also a wider surface area. So these won't be compatible. If you already have a G4, you're thinking of getting the V10, your battery won't be able to make that migration. One thing I'm happy to see from a design standpoint and how these back covers come off is LG did not build in a separate notch on the side of the phone to peel off the back plate. On both the V10 and the G4, there's like a little extra plastic ridge so that from the micro USB port, you can peel the back plate off. But the G4 also provides us an extra little notch on the side of the phone, which from a nitpicky design standpoint does interrupt the flow of this curve right here. And I'm just kind of digging on the fact that there just aren't any broken seams like that on the sides of the V10. It kind of gives the phone a little bit more of the appearance that it's one solid unit, even though we know we can pry that back cover off and get to all the goodies. And lastly, we got to talk about audio. The bottom firing speaker is a subtle improvement over the rear firing speaker on the G4, but the headphone jack playback on the V10 is head and shoulders, just a generational leap in, in quality improvements over the G4. The output from this headphone jack is louder, clearer, and has a much lower noise floor than what we find on the G4. Your signal to noise ratio is just off the grid compared to LG's standard flagship phone. Absolutely a beautiful improvement for folks out there who listen to high quality audio files. And overall, even though we're dealing with a larger screen and the second always on ticker display for the V10, I found battery life to be pretty similar between these two handsets. The one exception to that rule would be shooting ultra high definition video, where when you're shooting at the highest possible quality and bit rate from the V10, it does seem to drain the battery a little bit faster than what the G4 does. But of course you don't have any of those controls on the G4 to augment the video that you shoot. Regardless, they both did a terrific job of helping me get through my day with lots of notifications and turn-by-turn -turn navigation and streaming audio. And they both perform about the same when it comes to Qualcomm's fast charging, charging about 60% of your phone in about 30 minutes. But of course, the last differentiator between these two devices will be price. Of course, with all of the improvements to build quality, the additional features for things like the selfie cameras and the little ticker display, LG is definitely trying to position this as both a more fashionable device and a phone for power user content creators. Now, at the time this video was shot, we didn't have proper pricing availability from the US carrier here, but drawing from the pricing that this thing is selling for in South Korea, we're expecting around, somewhere around a $700 price point. You find a good sale, this is a really cheap flagship phone these days. And for it to have very similar camera performance and the same processor, very similar screen performance, I know that's been ruffling a few feathers out there. That this phone is somehow not enough of an upgrade compared to the phone which came before it. But I'd be a little cautious about basing current pricing on a new tier of smartphone based on the slightly more devalued in the market 
marketplace for a little while pricing on the G4. And I think there's totally room in that market for LG to move up to a premium tier, a premium pricing for a product like this, especially how this thing performs against phones like the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. Regardless, what I'm most happy about in comparing these two phones is seeing everything that I like about the G4 get subtly tweaked, improved, or additional features that I wish the G4 had, move over to the V10. This is absolutely a step in the right direction for LG, and I'm really happy to see them taking this course of action in launching a new tier of smartphone. And they share enough DNA that they're definitely both LG devices, but LG also didn't fall into the trap of making all of their phones look exactly the same like HTC has in the past. And of course, I wanna hear from you folks, especially as we're looking at the smartphone landscape, as smartphones have become ubiquitous. Flagship phones are kind of starting to plateau a little bit. There's a pretty well-saturated market out there for any company to be launching a new line of products. Do you think this was the step LG needed to take at the end of the year to keep a little bit more pressure on the market? Now that we've been playing with the G4 for a little while and we've seen what they've done with the V10, what do we expect for a possible G5 early next year? Definitely drop me some comments down below because those are the kinds of conversations I love getting into. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more rambling comparisons like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it, either by hitting the fan funding, shopping via my Amazon affiliate links, hooking yourself up a free audiobook or shopping for a loot crate using the links below this video, and by sharing my videos on your favorite social sites like Facebook and Twitter and Reddit and the Googles Plus, so please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next comparison.